If your English classes are anything like mine were, you've had teachers explain every detail of how they want you to write your essay until the last paragraph. Like, we will spend a week on the thesis alone and then just say pretty much nothing on the final paragraph. And this approach leaves most students uncertain about how to conclude their essay. But your conclusion paragraph acts as the final note in the symphony of your argument. It is the thing the audience will most remember hearing when they walk away. And if you want your essay to stand out from the crowd, a powerful conclusion is one of the fastest and easiest ways to make that happen. Now, there are some traditional guidelines that most students have heard before. Restate your thesis, don't bring up brand new ideas, avoid cliches like in conclusion. And these are fine, but they don't give you enough material to craft a whole paragraph from, and they certainly aren't going to help you stand out from the crowd. So let me present you a few different strategies, as well as some excerpts from world-class essays that exemplify them. The first is to use humor, irony, or satire to reinforce the main idea of the piece. The great humorist writer Dave Barry's Lost in the Kitchen uses football, Thanksgiving, and self-deprecation to remind men that, in general, while women have taken on more and more responsibilities outside of the home, they also continue to do the majority of the work inside of the home as well. Barry, who knows that triggering a reader's defenses usually eliminates any chance of them actually changing their mind, opts to end his essay with, I asked my wife to read this and tell me what she thought. This is what she said. She said, before women's liberation, men took care of the cars and women took care of the kitchen. Whereas now that we have women's liberation, men no longer feel obligated to take care of the cars. This seemed pretty accurate to me, so I thought I'd just tack it on at the end here while she makes waffles. Feigning to have missed the point completely makes the reader smile, and then think carefully about why they're smiling. Of course, we can't talk about humorous essays without looking at the most famous piece of satire in the English language, Jonathan Swift's A Modest Proposal. After detailing his satirical plans to sell Ireland's impoverished children as food for the rich, thereby both providing income for poor parents and lessening the number of starving children, Swift concludes his essay with this disclaimer. I profess in the sincerity of my heart that I have not the least personal interest in endeavoring to promote this necessary work, having no other motive than the public good of my country by advancing our trade, providing for infants, relieving the poor, and giving some pleasure to the rich. I have no children by which I can propose to get a single penny, the youngest being nine years old, and my wife past childbearing." There's something so powerful about keeping the joke up all the way until the last sentence. It's a stark reminder that the terror of Swift's plan is only so far off from the terror of Ireland's treatment by its English landlords at this time. Like Swift, George Orwell was also an accomplished essayist. A good skill to have when implementing our next strategy, ending the essay at the exact right moment. After describing the titular action and establishing its symbolic connection to imperialism, Orwell's shooting an elephant ends with the shocking confession, I often wondered whether any of the others grasped that I had done it solely to avoid looking a fool. The last sentence of a great essay is oftentimes just as memorable as the first. And if you connect those two sentences, you can use our next strategy, recursive structure. All writing is recursive. We continually loop back as we compose and edit. So it should be no surprise that looping back to the title or opening of the essay can create an extremely powerful and satisfying conclusion. In Sarah Vowell's Shooting Dad, the shocking title doesn't fully reveal its meaning until the last paragraph. And while Sherman Alexie's The Joys of Reading and Writing, Superman and Me, mentions the caped hero at the start, the final paragraph brings the entire piece together. Another way to think of this strategy is that the meaning of the title or opening anecdote isn't fully revealed until the end of the essay. This will give your essay a great sense of cohesion, and it really rewards a reader for reading carefully and thinking about the piece as a whole. Finally, one of the best pieces of advice I ever received about finishing an essay was to close the door, open a window. Meaning that your reader should feel like your argument is complete 
but you've invited them to continue to think about the topic. Notice that this advice runs a little counterintuitive to the traditional don't bring up a brand new idea approach. But here are two essays that show the value of a somewhat brand new idea in the concluding paragraph. In Just Walk On By, Brent Staples illustrates the effect his presence as a black man has on the public spaces he shares with others. Throughout the body of the essay, he shares personal experiences, stories about friends, and the reaction of bystanders to show how his gender and race have left him isolated, judged, and even threatened. He concludes his essay with a specific, powerful anecdote. And on late evening constitutionals, I employ what has proved to be an excellent, tension-reducing measure. I whistle melodies from Beethoven and Vivaldi and the more popular classical composers. Even steely New Yorkers hunching toward nighttime destinations seem to relax, and occasionally they even join in the tune. Virtually everybody seems to sense that a mugger wouldn't be warbling bright, sunny selections from Vivaldi's Four Seasons. It is my equivalent of the cowbell that hikers wear when they know they are in bear country. This is an example of a conclusion that zooms into the level of detail normally exhibited by novelists and screenwriters. Here, the conclusion makes the reader poignantly aware that the effect of the public sphere around the author is manifested in his person being in danger, not theirs. Closed door, open window conclusions can also zoom out. Barbara Ashears on Compassion asks readers to consider the role of unhoused individuals in our modern cities, what motivates those who help them, and if that motivation is really as important as the help itself. In the final paragraph, Ashir zooms out all the way to antiquity. For the ancient Greeks, drama taught and reinforced compassion within a society. The object of Greek tragedy was to inspire empathy in the audience, so that the common response to the hero's fall was, There, but for the grace of God, go I. Could it be that this was the response of the mother who offered the dollar, the French woman who gave the food? Could it be that the homeless, like those ancients, are reminding us of our common humanity? Of course, there is a difference. This play doesn't end, and the players can't go home. Like Staples, Ashir introduces a new idea, but she makes the idea relevant, poignant, and memorable. These endings open a window for the reader, who the author respects enough to entrust with the final task of reading into the conclusion, not being spoon-fed a regurgitated thesis. I hope you found some of those strategies useful in your own approach to essay writing. If you want to see more videos about writing essays, you can check them out here, and I will link all the essays that I referenced in this video in the description if you'd like to read them in their entirety. They're all excellent. You should check them all out. Thank you so much for watching, and happy reading.